for the review, let's go through number one here. It says f of x equals 3 times 2 to the x power for the domain 1, 2, 3, and 4. What that means is you plug in 1, 2, 3, and 4. So you can make a table if you want. You don't even really have to. Um, it's 3 times 2 to the x. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in four different problems. We're going to have 3 times 2 to the first. Then you're going to have 3 times 2 to the second. <coughs> 3 times 2 to the 3rd, and 3 times 2 to the 4th. Now, please make sure that you're following order of operations. Follow order of operations. You have to do exponents first. Okay, so if we do the exponents first, we do 2 to the first power. That's 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, the second one. You do 2 squared first, you do 2 squared, that's 4, 4 times 3 is 12, so you have to be sure to follow order of operations, you have to do the exponents first. 2 to the, thir two to the third power is 8, and 8 times 3 is 24, 2 to the fourth power is 16, and 16 times 3 is 48. So that's how you do that, just be sure to follow order of operations, that's all it's asking for on number 1. Okay? Alright, number 2. On the test tomorrow, I will give you the table of values because on exponential functions, it's very easy. They go off the graph very quickly. So I'm going to give you those values so that it will make it to where it will for sure fit on the graph. The values that seem to work best for this one are negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those values seem to work the best. So those are the ones we're going to plug in. If we plug in negative 1, if we do 2.5 to the negative 1 power, we should get 0.4. So we get 0.4. What happens when we plug 0 in? When we get 2.5 to the 0 power, what is that? Zero. Not 0. Zero. Remember, zero. Anything, remember the exponent rules. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So that would be 1. If we plug in 1, we get 2.5 to the first power. That just gives us 2.5. 2.5 to the second power, that gives us 6.25. So then you take all four of these coordinate points and you plot them on the graph. So the first coordinate point is negative 1 and 0.4. So we go left 1 and up to 0.4. You'll have to just kind of eyeball that. And then we have 0, 1. Put a point there. 1, 2.5. So we go over 1 and up to 2.5. And then 2 and then 6.25. So go over to 2 and up to 6.25, somewhere up in here, like that. So this gives us a curve. That's about what this looks like. All exponential functions give you a curve like that. All right, numbers 3 and 4, I know a lot of people have forgotten exactly how to do those. You've slept since then. Um, Number three is an exponential growth problem. And the reason it is is because it's money. You put into an annuity with 7% interest. I would hope that would grow, right, not decay. So we use in both of them, we use the same function, y equals a times b to the x power, where a is your starting amount and b is your growth rate. Since this is an exponential growth, b is going to be your growth rate here, okay? So a is your starting amount. We know that. That's 650. Here's how we get a growth amount. This is where you really want to pay attention. Okay, for X, for our growth rate, what you do is you have to look at, on the investment problems when we're dealing with money, you have to look and see where, where how often is it compounded because that's going to make a difference in our interest rate. Right now our interest rate is 7%, which in decimal form is 0.07. What you have to do is you have to divide that by the number of periods there are in that year. If it's annually, how many, year, period, how many years are in a year? One, right? So we would divide by one. Here, though, it's compounded quarterly. How many quarters are in four. one year? Four. So you go ahead and divide that interest rate by four and then add one to it. So you cannot forget that divide step. If it's quarterly, you divide by four. If it's monthly, you divide by 12. Annually, you divide by one so it doesn't change it. So be sure to pay attention to where it says compounded what. You got that's very important to the problem. It will make you it will cause you mistakes if you don't pay attention to that part. Okay? So then we do this calculation and I believe you get 1.0175. Okay. 
0, 1, 7, 5. So that's what you get for your growth rate. So that's what's going to go in for B. You're going to put 1.0175 in for B. A is your starting amount. A is what we started with, it, which is $650. You do $650 times 1.0175 is your growth rate. And then to the X power. Now, we need to figure out what are we going to put into that X power. What's going to go in there? We want to know how much money we have after seven years. Now, if this compounded annually, we would put seven. We would put exactly seven if it compounded annually. This one, however, if you notice, compounds quarterly. So we have to figure out how many quarters are in each year, and then how many quarters are in seven years. If there's four in one year, right, you take four times seven to get 28. So we're going to be plugging in 28. 650 times 1.0175 to the 28th power. So don't put 7 unless it said annually, then you would put 7. But this one says quarterly, so you have to figure out how many quarters are in a year. So we have $1,056.42. Oh, 52 cents. So that's how much money you should have, $1,056.52. But yeah, don't round that interest rate. Keep, keep the rate as as many decimals as they give you unless it fills up your calculator screen if it fills up your calculator screen just go out to about three or four decimals okay the next problem is an exponential decay that means we have to find a decay factor instead of a growth rate so we still use the function y equals a times b to the x we need to find our decay rate of decay to find rate of decay you have to take one and you have to subtract from it the rate. So this time instead of doing the rate plus one, we're going to do one minus the rate. One minus r. One minus one minus the rate. Two percent, what is that in decimal form? Six. Two percent in decimal form is what? Point zero two. So we take one minus point zero two. Because we can't have a negative number on a rate of decay. And if if we took point two minus one, that's going to give us a negative number. So it's point nine eight. Yes, can you? Okay, so it's 0.98, so that's our rate of decay. That's how you find your rate of decay. You take 1 minus the rate. Now we plug this stuff in. What is A? What's our starting amount? How many acres of forest do we have at the beginning? 4,500,000, right? Where did you get that formula? That's just the basic form of an exponential equation. I'll, I'll give you, well, it'll be in the directions. So 1 minus 0.02? Yes, so then it's times 0.98 to the x power. Now, what power are we going to put that to? 10. 10, because it says determine the amount of forest land after 10 years. So we're going to plug 10 in. So our function then is 4,500,000. So it's quarterly, right? No, this has nothing to do with quarterly. The only ones that will do quarterly or that is if you're talking about investing money. Okay. Um, so then this is to the 10th power. So what do we get when we do that? Well, okay, one of you, please. One of you, please. Kenyon, what is it? 3,676,827.63. 8, 27.63. 0.63 acres. We could have rounded that to 3,676,828. Either way is fine. Um, let's go to the back side. Uh, on number 6 and 7, it says, are the following functions exponential growth or exponential decay? All exponential equations are in the form y equals a times b to the x. If your b is greater than 1, then it's a growth problem. It's exponential growth. If your b is greater than, or it's less than 1 but greater than 0, it's always going to be greater than 0. It's, if, if your b is in between 0 and 1, then it's decay. So you have to look at your uh, b on each of those problems. So if, if b is between 0 and 1, it's a decay. If it's greater than 1, it's growth. So looking at number uh, 6, yeah, they are. Because see, number six, our B is seven. So that's bigger than one, so it's growth. They're not both 
Yeah, there. Because look at your B here. Your B equals 2.5 here. That's bigger than one also. I think I meant to make one of them. It's the B. Yeah. Yeah, you look at the B. You look at the number with the exponent. And if that number is bigger than 1, it's growth. If it's between 0 and 1, it's decay. All right, that's, a, that's all you got to do on those. All right, number 8 and 9. These, you guys, it should be more fresh on your mind, but on this one, if you remember, we changed it to where this was a 2 in front and a plus 9 on the end. So on these, we have to use that um, axis of symmetry equation where it's x equals negative b over 2a. What's our a on this problem? Six and then one. Two. We had to change it. Remember, we had to put a two in front of the x squared. Oh, I was looking at the original. And then b is 12. So let's plug that into the formula. We get negative 12 over 2 times 2. That gives us negative 12 over 4. What's negative 12 over 4? Negative 3. So our x is the symmetry is x equals negative 3. So let's go ahead and draw our line, our axis of symmetry at negative 3. Now, what do we do with that x equals negative 3? We put it into the equation. Yeah, we put it back into the equation. The equation is 2x squared plus 12x plus 9. So we plug in and we replace x with the negative 3. So we do 2, negative 3 squared plus 12 times negative 3. Oh, my goodness plus 9. And then, so when we plug in negative 3, we're going to come out with something. That's going to give us our vertex. What do we come out with after we... What do we get, guys? Negative 9. Negative nine. So it's negative 9. So it's negative 3, negative 9. That's our vertex. So we go to negative 3, negative 9, and put a point. All right, so that's our vertex. Now we need to find two values to the right or two values to the left of this line. Yeah, I've used the easier or smaller ones, negative 2, negative 1. So let's do that. We'll do negative 2 first. Negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 plus 9. And then we'll also do negative 1. When we put negative 2 in, what do we get? Negative 7, so it's negative 2, negative 7. And then when we put negative 1 in, what do we get? Negative 1. So we put negative 1 in, we get negative 1 out. So we're going to graph those other two points. We have negative 2, negative 7, and negative 1, negative 1. So we have a half a parabola going on right now. All right, so then we, uh, we have half a parabola. We're going to mirror it opposite this line of symmetry. We're going to mirror those points, and then we will connect our dots. And there we have our parabola. <coughs> Now, how do we know if we have to shade or not? Yeah, the inequality symbol. This right here is just an equals. If it's just an equals, there's no shading involved. If it's an inequality sign like number 9, then there's going to be shading either above or below. Y is less than negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 5. We use our equation x equals negative b over 2a. What's a and what's b? A is negative 2, B is negative 8. We plug it into our formula. We get X equals negative negative 8 over 2 times negative 2. On top, we get an 8. On the bottom, we get a negative 4. What's 8 divided by negative 4? Negative 2. How about negative 2? No, it's a positive 8. That's, my part, that's part of my equal sign, guys. It's a positive 8. Positive 8 over negative 4 is negative 2. So our x axis of symmetry is at negative 2. Axis of symmetry is negative 2. 
Now we find the vertex. We plugged negative 2 into our equation. Negative 2 times negative 2 squared minus 8 times negative 2 minus 5. Put that right into your calculator. You're going to get negative 2, and then what do you come out with? Is it 3? When you put that in your calculator, you get a 3. Negative 2, 3 is our vertex. Now we use either two numbers to the right or two numbers to the left. Zero and one are available, or zero and negative one are available. So I would say we use those. So we'll do that. So we have we're going to do negative one. And then we're also going to do zero. What do we, we get when we plug negative one in? We get one. When we plug zero in, we get negative five. So negative one, one, and zero, negative five. That gives us half our parabola. And we would expect it to open downward because of the negative in front of the x squared. So that does, that does make sense, that it opens downward. And then we mirror in our other points. Okay, so we have, um, look at your inequality symbol. It's y is less than. There's no or equal to, so that tells us that it is a dashed line, not a solid line. So we're going to dash this in. This is a dashed line. And then we have to decide which way are we going to shade, above or below. It's y is less than, so where are we going to shade? Below. below, so is that... That's inside the parabola, isn't it? So it's going to be inside. So we're going to shade just that little part right there. Just the parabola. All right, 10 and 11 we just did yesterday. This shouldn't take too much review here. The first one, number 10, is exponential. And the reason it's exponential is because it's times 3 each time. When that happens, it's exponential. Number 11 Let's, we know it's not times something each time. We, we notice that's not the pattern, so we find their differences. The difference between negative 1 and 1 is 2. The difference between 1 and 7 is 6. Between 7 and 17 is 10. So we know it's not linear, otherwise these would be the same. So let's try the differences again. 2 and 6, the difference is 4. 6 and 10, the difference is 4. So we call that quadratic. And those are the things that will be on the test tomorrow. Will we see, will you give us the names like quadratic? Yeah, I'll give you those. Hopefully.